Joining us with his pulse on the health of housing is Logan Matashami. Thank you so much for being here with us. He's the lead analyst at Housing Wire. Logan, I guess, first of all, let's get your reaction to those pending home sales numbers that just came out about 17 minutes ago. What do you think? Well, we're working from 21st century lows in demand, so it doesn't take much to move the needle here. But the last eight weeks, as mortgage rates started to rise, we're seeing softness in the forward-looking data. That might, that'll come up in the next few months. And again, we just don't have a lot of people moving in America right now. Kind of think of the Fed's policy for housing. It's kind of like a, almost like a COVID-19 stay at home. Mm. And that's really preventing sales from growing in, in a meaningful way. So that is interesting, of course, and there's supply and demand means so much in the housing market. And so if you have would-be sellers not wanting to move because then they will be paying more because their mortgages would be higher, you've got much less supply, which then ultimately drives prices higher for the housing that is that is available. I mean, isn't that sort of opposite of what the Fed wants to do when it wants to bring down inflation, particularly on an asset like housing? You know, the American public just isn't into the Fed's housing policy, you know, so it's just one of these things where this last week we're seeing home prices are at all time highs and there's nothing you can do here unless you create a job loss recession and force people to move. So I think on one hand, the Federal Reserve understands this, that American household balance sheets are much better. And then Americans are just, hey, we're waiting. Right. And they can do this for a few more years. So the question is, hmm. at what point does the Fed actually address this without saying kind of random comments? I think the next time the 10 year yield goes below 4 percent, let's not bring Neil Kashkari out here and say, oh, 6 percent mortgages are bad. Kind of let the market kind of work itself. Job openings are falling. The growth rate of inflation is falling. People have to start buying homes and creating households. So next time rates fall, just Fed relax. Take it easy. <laughs> The, the supply of housing uh, obviously also is falling and it is extremely tight. I mean, what, what's it going to take uh, besides people moving, I guess, for more, more new homes to be built in America yeah. to sort of ease this supply crunch? You know, new listings data has been trending at the lowest levels ever recorded in history for the last 12 months. But this last move higher in rates for the first time this year, what I saw in the weekly data is that we saw a noticeable decline week to week in new listings. This is the last thing we want is another leg lower in new listings, which means we are, again, stuck near all time lows in inventory. And the longer this goes on, that one point when rates do fall, it will almost have like a rubber band effect about people wanting to buy and uh it's not a good situation. So hopefully the fight against inflation, the growth rate falls, rates fall. You get some kind of normal housing market. What we have right now is not very normal. It's not very healthy. And the builders are never going to build enough to offset this. So we are just it's a waiting game right now because the American public just isn't into the Fed's policy. Uh, then, Logan, <laughs> we keep uh, reading or seeing data about the potential for oversupply in multifamily in Austin, in Charlotte, in Raleigh, in Nashville, in Denver. How much of a danger is that? First of all, that's not a danger. That's a positive. Second of all, traditionally, home buyers don't really go for apartments. They typically have a bigger household. So that doesn't really imply to the um, uh, home buying market. But definitely, more supply is a great thing. We want oversupply in the rental because the growth rate of rents falls, the growth rate of inflation falls. That's a positive. So build it. The concern I have is that rates have gone up so much so fast that we're starting to see construction projects being pulled, multifamily uh, units under construction being pulled. So there becomes a point where you keep rates high enough, long enough to really impact supply. And that million uh, apartments that are under construction, I don't believe that'll get finished to the degree that we hope for. So hopefully we can get the oversupply in the in the rental market so we can get rental uh, uh, disinflation. That'll be positive for everyone in the United States.